page 185. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. May his grace and peace be with you. May you know that our hearts is joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord.
While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord.
because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand and sing our gradual hymn, hymn number 478. Almighty God, thy word is past for one and two prior to God. and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name, his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father has promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
short and challenging. Jesus' love constantly shakes us out of our comfort zone and calls us to love new people, people outside of the norm. He calls us to welcome those who nobody else is welcoming, to welcome and to encourage and lift up the gifts of those that nobody else recognizes. Jesus says, let the little children come on to me. Nobody can enter the, the kingdom of heaven unless they come as one of these, a child. Well, what's special about a child anyway? Well, if you've had an opportunity to spend time with one, and I'm looking forward to spending time with my grandchildren later this week, and that is that they are full of wonder. Their hearts are wide open. They're constantly wanting to learn something more. What's a question you hear from a child over and over again? Why? Why? Why do we do it that way? Why? Jesus challenges us to be like children, to go through the world and asking, why? Why should we do it this way? Well, why not try it this way? I don't know what it is that God might be challenging you with. But I know God is constantly challenging us. And that shouldn't scare us. It should excite us. Because it means that even though God sent his son to us over 2,000 years ago, and his ministry was but a short three years and his resurrection happened a long time ago and he journeyed on the earth for 40 days and he ascended so very long ago it didn't end with those people back then it continues Jesus wants us to get our heads out of the clouds and ask the question how God how do I live into your ministry here, now, today? What does your ascension mean to me now? Why am I here? Who am I sent to serve and to love? Who needs my help to become all that they are destined to be, all that God calls them to be? Who am I called to be? And recognizing that whoever it is we are called to be, we can never come to the fullness of who we are called to be, to the wholeness of life that God calls each of us to be, without one another, without the support of God journeying alongside us and us recognizing that God is there, or at least hoping that God is there, but also in the support that we offer and receive from one another. If we imagine the church is a place to come and look at the clouds and wonder what it is that Jesus calls us to, recognize it's also the church that says, get your head out of the clouds, get your high knees out of the pew, get out there and do what it is that God has called us to do. If you're not sure, if you're asking why you are where you are, ask the question, how is it that I might be called to love into this situation? How is it that I might be challenged to love somebody new? How is it that I might challenge to love somebody enough to bring them into the wholeness that God calls them to? It didn't end with Jesus' ascension. It began. And he sends the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we receive next week, as we celebrate Pentecost, and Reverend Bill, Vivian challenges you to do as one has done today and wear red, wear bright colors, wear an orange hat, I don't care, come in bright colors as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is ultimately the gift that sends us out the door. It's the gift that goes with us. We come to church to charge our batteries so that we know that we are once again um, filled up with God's teaching, with God's presence. We are lifted up in our praise of God on Sunday morning so that we can go out 
with the Spirit and live into the fullness that God calls us. A love that challenges us. To love God with everything we've got. Remember? With our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Everything in us. And to do this by loving our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. Amen. And all men said the servant. <laughs> It's funny, last week they were all just like little church. <laughs> it's amazing the growth that can happen in a sermon in a week. Shall we stand and confess our faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed, which you will find on page 100. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our last. Reverend Deborah Burleson, 
Robert Curtis, and for St. George's, the Reverend Nichols Hatt, the Reverend Peter Harris, and the Reverend our own Reverend Jim, Father Jim Harris, uh, Burgess. In the world, we pray for the, world, the Church of the Province of West Africa. So, and now to our litany. Um, as the refrain is, um, when I say, both heaven and earth are full of God's glory, is what we say. So, having brought back our freedom with the, the giving of his life, Jesus enters into the full glory to which he is entitled. As we celebrate together, let us pray together. God of love, as we celebrate this festival of Jesus' entry into heaven as Savior and Lord, we pray for unity in the church and reconciliation and renewed vision. Both heaven and earth are full of God's glory. As we recall the shout of praise in heaven, the shout of there, um, as the Lord, as the Lamb of God appears, we pray for all who are hailed as heroes and given great honor on earth. For all who worship anyone or anything other than the true God. Both heaven and earth are full of God's glory. We pray for all farewells and homecomings among our families and in our community, and for all who have lost touch with loved ones and long for reunion. Both heaven and earth are full of God's glory. We pray for those who are full of tears and cannot imagine being happy again. We pray for the hardened and the callous, whose inner hurts have never yet been healed. We pray for wholeness and comfort and new life. Both heaven and earth are full of God's glory. We commend to your eternal love those who remember who have died. And we pray too for those who miss their visible presence. Both heaven and earth are full of God's glory. We praise and bless you, God, in our name, for the way you draw us deeper into the meaning of life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Today we'll be using you for prayer number two, which you can find on page 198. The Lord gives you. Oh, 
Christ has sent us to all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom, confirm us to this mission, and help us to live the good news he proclaimed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And glory to God, whose power is in us to move infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord open your hearts and minds to new wisdom, new understanding, and new opportunities to love God. Love, send God's love into the world. We pray this blessing in the name of God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We invite you to finish your seat at Fort Hope. Thank you for sharing the happy news. We don't always share the happy news 
the, the outcome of our prayers, and uh, so thank you for that. Um, so, speaking of happy, we got a happy clappy hand, you can blame me, um, but I hope you will get a little bit happy clappy. We're going to do uh, the trees of the field, and if you recall from our song today, it says that we should shout for joy, sing praises to God, and that's what this song is about, it's to get us fired up as we move out into the world to sing God's praises. So hymn number 662, The Trees of the Field. <laughs> 